Okay, let's see how to set up events. And event handlers are using the jQuery library. So here we have a sample uh, HTML file. Here we look at the source code. This is the HTML that's generating that. You see, I am first I'm loading my jQuery, and then I am loading this script.js file, which is right here. It just doesn't have anything. So it says loaded. And uh, so when I reload that, uh, put up my console here. It says loaded script, uh, so I reload that, it shows that. So, okay, the way the event handlers work in any, any document, in any HTML document, is um, the browser, you know, the browser will sees the DOM, right? It sees something like this. So when the user, say, clicks on something, the browser finds the element that the user clicked in, the smallest, most element, right? The, like if you click here, the browser would say, oh, he clicked on this span on an element. And then uh, the browser will ask, well, is there a method, is there an event handler on the click event for this element? If there isn't, then the browser goes up one element, or the P tag in this case. It says, is there an event handler on this one? No. Then it goes up one more, which would be the body in this case. And uh, so you can place an event handler in any element. Uh, and uh, it will call your function. So an event handler is all just a function. So let's do that. Uh, the first thing we have to do is this business of uh, dollar document ready. Uh, whoops. So I'm going to do that. Function. There. So we talked about this last time. You set that up uh, because this is going to get called when the document is actually loaded. Right? And uh, we're going to set, let's start with setting uh, just uh, a little uh, event handler right here on the do it element. That link here has an ID of do it. And uh, actually, I'll just do it. So what we do is we say we grab that guy, it's called do it. And we say on, and on the click event, I'm going to call the function, uh, let's call it user click. Okay. So what's user click? Well, we'll define that. Function user click takes one argument, E. Again, if you miss it, it's not going to complain about it. And it's just going to print out. Click. For now. So I'll go over here, reload. When the user goes over here, clicks, I got the click. I click on it, I got two, three, four, five. So that's working, right? So whenever the user clicks on that element, uh, it calls this function here. And this is, so we call this function now an event handler. An event handler, and we say that here we are uh, setting up or tying the event handler, user click to the event, click on the element, do it. Set up event handler, right? Uh, and uh, so let's have him do something a little more interesting. We saw this last time. Uh, we can, uh, instead of uh, just printing that out, we can have him uh, change the document, right? So message.toggle. So what is message? Message is the first paragraph, right? PID message is that first paragraph. So we're going to have him, uh, when user clicks on that, on this link, is going to toggle the first paragraph. Reload that, I click, paragraph goes away. I click again, the paragraph comes back. And that's how that works. Um, so you can put you know whatever code you want, and it all loads here. So now, uh, why? You notice that we have this user click up here and this stuff here within the ready function. Why is that? Well, the reason is uh, is this part here, right? This do it here. Uh, I'm grabbing this element. Well, that element, if you go over here, that element is going to be this link. You notice that in this case, I'm loading the JavaScript at the top. So um, the way the browser works is going to start loading all this JavaScript. It could be that it loaded this JavaScript and started running your script.js before it actually got to this HTML 
part. So if you started running this code before you got to here and then you ran this line here, do it. There was no do it element at that point in time. So that's why anything you put in here uh, only runs after the whole web page is loaded. So after the page is loaded, you're guaranteed that this stuff is inside here will run only after the whole page is loaded. Uh, this other stuff here, this function here, that, that's fine. So I can run this. What I'm doing here is defining a function. So I'm not actually running the function, right? I'm defining the function. So I can define this function before there is a message element. That's not a problem. I'm just defining the function. I can't run it, you know, but that's okay. I'm not going to run it anyway. So, okay, something you can do that. You can um, tie elements to a particular element, but you can also tie uh, an event handler to, say, all the P's, all the paragraphs. So if you do that, reload now. Whenever I click, if I click, say, on this other paragraph, the first paragraph goes away. I click over here. It comes back. I click on paragraph itself it goes away then I click over here this other guy comes back right, you can do that uh, uh, notice uh, let's look at an example of uh, say, let's say we did that and then I'm gonna go again and do it do it and say on click um, we're gonna call this you know a hide title so I'm gonna hide the title and uh, I title E and uh, I'm gonna say is console.log I title dollar h1 toggle. So it's just gonna toggle the title when I click on then. So Back over here, reload. Hopefully, it's all. So, I'm going to click here, and you see the title is gone, but also the first paragraph was gone. Notice that. So, I'm going to go click again, first paragraph title, click both of them gone, and you see that it called both of them. So, why is that? Well, that's the way it worked, right? So, uh, just because uh, you reach, so when I clicked here, it looked for an event handler, it found one, and it did it. But it doesn't mean it stops, it keeps going. So then it went over here to the P element and says, is there an event handler for this P? Yes, there is. So it did that one. So it's going to do all event handlers up the tree by default, unless uh, you do the following. You say e dot stop propagation. Hopefully I spell that correctly. And I reload. I click the link. And here you see now only the h1 is gone, the paragraph is still there. So that's an important one to know. Another one that's important to understand is that, uh, let's say, you know, I want it to be so that whenever I click on a paragraph, that paragraph goes away. So if I click on this one, this one goes away. If I click on this one, this one goes away, and so forth. And uh, you know, see, that's kind of hard to do with this because I have this hardwired in here. To, message right and you know the first one is called message and you know next one it's called content and so forth um, so I can do that um, I'm gonna change this or hide this I call it hide in and uh, what I'm gonna do is say this toggle I'm gonna get rid of that we don't need that now and uh, I change this to hide this. So every paragraph, when the, the click event on it, we're gonna hide it. And uh, let's see if that works. I'm gonna reload the page. I click on this second paragraph, and he's gone. Click on this one, he's gone. I click on this one, he's gone. They're all gone. <laughs> now there's no way to get him back, uh, except you know I can go here and say p dot and then they all come back. All right, so this, you know, this is, so this, when you have an event handler, the word this is going to refer to the element that is triggering that particular event at that time, right? So in this case, you know, that's about this. And notice that you have to wrap the this in the jQuery dollar sign 
That's because we're calling the toggle uh, function, which is a jQuery function. So that way we get you know the jQuery DOM version of this. Otherwise, you get the raw element, DOM element, right? So this is the DOM element that generated the event uh, on which whose event handler we're calling right now. So far, we've only been using the click event. That's when the user clicks on the mouse, but there's a lot of other events you can use. If you go over to the jQuery documentation, I'll go down to events, and then I click here, then you'll see uh, all the various events. Uh, they're separated here by browser events. These are events that the browser itself generates when the user resizes the window or scrolls the window like that. We, uh, the ones we saw, of course, the click is a mouse event, so click here. This is the mouse event. Click is the one we've been using, but there's double click, focus in, focus out. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't know, like focusing in is when the, uh, when you click on a text box and you get the cursor in that, so the focus is in that text box. There's hovering and then, you know, mouse down and mouse move, right? So a click is actually a mouse down uh, followed by a mouse up. Right, so the mouse button goes down, the mouse button goes up. In between them, the mouse can move, right, or the or the pointer. Um, so the mouse move event is called whenever the mouse moves over an event. Let's just take a look at that one. So I could change this from click to mouse move, and uh, we're just gonna get rid of that. So it's just gonna print hide this every time and uh, going back here reload so you see the number there is going higher and higher because every time the mouse moves we get an event so now we're up to 187 events as my mouse has moved over this paragraph element here and uh, see if, we, if I'm out here then I get no events so it's only when I'm over the paragraph which is right about now Okay, so I'd like to go here. So you can explore these. Uh, those are the mouse events, the keyword events when the user types in this form event, uh, like the submit when the user hits the submit ones. You can also create your own events for your once you do more complicated applications. You can do that. Um, if you click over here, you see also there's a shortcut. So instead of saying on click, you can just say you know dot click. Um, so instead of saying on uh, mouse move, or actually I don't know if there's one, but uh, I can say instead of on click, I can say click hide this, like that. Uh, so it's a little shortcut, saves you a little bit of typing, and there's similarity for some of them. A lot of them have that. And one last thing. Uh, so going back here, you notice that our event handlers take one argument E. Right, this argument E is an event and it's going to give us more information about what happened. So, for example, let's say I'm going to go over here and change this to mouse move. So, on a mouse move, I'm going to print hide this. And, uh, well, I'm going to print that. X equals and uh, E dot, go back to documentation. And uh, event dot page x is the mouse position relative to the left edge of the document, and uh, e dot page x. So we're gonna print that. Uh, then go back here. I'm gonna reload that, and uh, you'll see that as I move the mouse, it's printing the x coordinate of the mouse, uh, you know, relative to the document. So and uh, so that's what uh, this uh, event data is going to. Some of these can give me the x y coordinate, the y coordinate, some other stuff here, target types, etc. So you can look into that. Um, but that's how you get more information about the specific event that just fired.